Yeah, I think um, there are a number of factors that are very important. I think before sort of necessarily saying about the medication, I think the informed consent is very important. I think the patients need to be fully aware of what they may experience. And so as long as the patient understands they're not, they're not going to experience heat, but they will experience discomfort, uh, which most women desc describe as a, a, a period-like cramping sensation, which can range from very mild to more severe. As long as patients are aware of that, then that allows them to make a, a choice. The majority of patients then, certainly in my patient practice, would choose the outpatient setting because they understand it's quick, it's safe, and it's convenient. But they do understand they will experience some discomfort, and it's impossible to anaesthetize the uterus. So the first thing is to prepare the patient. Second thing is to have the setting right. And so I think that the, the actual environment is extremely important, privacy for the patients, some of them to get changed, to have nursing staff around who uh, are very skilled in uh, using, performing, for example, uh, assisting in, in the procedures, and particularly a nurse who actually acts as the uh, patient advocate, which is extremely important. Those things are key. As a of medication, generally I would favour giving a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent, so we tend to give diclofenac 100 milligrams as a suppository an hour or so prior to the procedure. We also generally give paracetamol or codeine with that and also an antiemetic. The patients are encouraged to eat and not to fast and that's important so that they are well hydrated um, uh, but we would tend to give medication uh, that, that sort of pre-med. We then perform the procedure. During the procedure I'd normally give a short acting local anaesthetic which I think we demonstrated on the video and this can be anything from lignocaine, uh, bipivacaine or prilocaine, something short acting I think is generally what you need to use and that's a, diet, that's a cervical block and then post-operatively we write them up for um, usually a, uh, a range of uh, analgesics from simple analgesics such as codeine and paracetamol to uh, opiates more strong narcotic analgesics such as oral or parenteral morphine. The majority of patients don't tend to require the morphine although some do. It's important they go back and they can relax on a, a bed or a reclining couch normally within two hours Perhaps a maximum of four hours, most patients would be well enough to go home. And we send them home with, again, simple analgesics, which is usually diclofenac and paracetamol to take regularly for the next 48 hours. The protocol that we use is to start an hour and a half before the procedure with an oral dose of tramadol, cyclozine and volterol. Then the women come into the treatment room, and I think the most important thing in there is that there's a nurse that looks after them throughout the procedure and keeps them calm and keeps them distracted. We then put in a four quadrant cervical, deep cervical block with 3% mepivacaine. Having dilated the cervix, we then go on to the treatment, which is on average 90 seconds. And then as soon as you take the device out, even though the woman has experienced some pain during the procedure, the pain almost exclusively goes away as soon as the device is removed. Um, we are performing Novashaw in a diagnostic and treatment centre in primary care in Bradford and this seems to be going extremely well. I think there are a few things that are really important when preparing the women for an overshore procedure. Primarily is good information giving. All our women have had a diagnostic hysteroscopy and we ensure that they obviously tolerate that well. They are then given a lot of information, verbal and written, about the Novashaw procedure and are given a lot of time to think about their options. Once they decide that they'd like to have the treatment, they're given uh, a, an appointment time and then obviously spoken to before they have the treatment done. I think the other thing that's very important is the pre-medication, the local anaesthetic and the support that's given to them throughout the procedure.